Hello and welcome to our final week. This is the last week of our Take 4 lecture series for the month of January. Next week we are starting a whole new round of a new topic, a new host, a new journey into the history of film. A director that we are going to primarily focus on is named Vera Chitilova. Vera Chitilova was a avant-garde Czech film director and pioneer of Czech cinema, particularly in the 1960s. She was actually banned by the Czechoslovakian government because of the very political themes in her films, especially coming from a female perspective. Chitlova grew up with a very strict Catholic background, which definitely led to a certain question and kind of rebellion against formal tradition in her work. We are going to be dissecting just one film today. I was so happy when I saw this film. It's so experimental and avant-garde, totally broke boundaries and really set a mark in feminist film theory, political film theory. It's punk, it's feminist, it's directed by a female director. And this all happened in 1966. And this film is called Daisies. This is the film I will be signing for the weekend. So let's get into it. Daisies is actually classified as a surrealist comedy. The film was released in 1966 and was both written and directed by Vera Chitilova. The film was a major milestone for Czech New Wave in cinema. The narrative follows two young girls, both named Marie, who are very, very interesting. We're really presented with their kind of awkward, odd character right in the beginning. And we're not only shown this visually from their character, but we're also introduced to the immediate avant-garde and unique sound design and editing sort of choreography that's so heavily stylized that we're immediately put into Chislova's art direction and aesthetic and real genius in experimental editing. In ways, one could say that it's completely influenced by the Dada movement and the fact that the imagery is so confusing and it's meant to confuse and also entertain the audience. Aside from any of the dialogue, it's a total work of art. Simply using this confusion to entertain and you could absolutely relate this to what we talked about two weeks ago when we discussed Eraserhead. David Lynch sort of does the same techniques. It's, it's very strange and confusing, yet it has this aura of humor. We can laugh at it. How by viewing something that really puzzles us can actually be really entertaining and fun. There's many symbols in the film. I'd say the most prominent is right after the opening scene, both Marie and Marie go into this daisy field that is clearly symbolic of the title. They find this apple tree that is very staged, very theatrical, it looks very campy in a way, and they start picking these fresh apples. This is definitely a representation of Eve and the female energy, female life and the female purpose of, of recreating life, which was such a, such a prominent way of looking at women in a time that was so male dominated. This is also when the film transitions into color. When the opening scene was in black and white, the second that both the Maries enter this field, it's, it's completely in color, which can definitely identify to realizations of these reputations and also introducing us to the color and the flavor of, of how they see the world, which is so vibrant and super saturated. What's super interesting when watching Daisies is the fact that the movement is very non-linear, which is a consistent theme that we've been discussing in all of these past films. When I say non-linear, I'm referring to, to an editing technique that is not consistent. There is not a scene transitioning into another scene that makes sense or something that maybe we were set up for previously in the film or in a previous scene or even just a shot. In Daisies, again, we're getting this kind of rapid uh, change in tempo, shifting of movements, which 
also in ways takes a little bit of the symbology that was in the scene before and transitions it into the next. The ego is very is very aware of itself in this film, especially for both of these two young girls. What's very funny about this is, you know, these girls are so aloof and are in this state of just pushing any societal norms or standards to the side, which is a very true reflection of how a lot of people were feeling during this time, how there's kind of this hopeless mentality that everything in the country was falling apart, so what's the point in following the rules? There are many scenes that are completely toying with the idea of taking advantage of men, and this definitely represents a a culture of men clearly taking advantage of women and here we have a very twisted perspective coming from these two young girls and in these scenes the editing choices really parallel the actions that the characters are taking especially in some of these scenes in the bar there's all these mid-shot cuts and flashes to new characters and it's just it's kind of bizarre, but it's funny and it, and it reflects what's happening in the scene. The other major theme is food. There's so many scenes in this film where both of the Maries are literally just sitting around consuming food and eating it and spitting it up and chewing it back out. It somewhat always revolves around some sort of relationship with, with a boyfriend or a man. During this scene, after a boyfriend is on the phone calling and crying about, about how much he loves Marie and blah, 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 blah. They're literally sitting around eating bananas and sausages and cutting them up into pieces with scissors. Like pure indulgence. Themes of just excess amounts of pleasure, of, of privilege in a way, especially because the Czech Republic was under a food crisis right around the time that this film came out. So this was definitely a very punk thing to do, to have all of these scenes that had all of this food that was just completely being wasted. It was really considered too excessive, especially at the last scene of the film, which is a royal food fight where a lot of food is wasted and just thrown at each other. It really was, I think, this scene in particular that got the film banned in the Czech Republic. And then next, obviously, this theme of feminism. They are really the leaders. Not only are they the lead roles of the film, but their characters are, are complete leaders of the situation. They are constantly acting totally childish and they get away with it. <laughs> they go to the club and bring their own drinks in and they get kicked out of the club because they are just absolutely incoherent. They never really face any kind of punishment or authority for their actions. But it's interesting because even though they, I mean, they're not little girls, I would say they're, they're young women and they act as if they are representing how they do get treated in society, which is like a little girl. But uh, Chitalova does this in a sense that it's just absurd. <laughs> The scene in particular that stands out for me the most is both the philosophy behind this scene and also the editing technique. We actually physically see a scene transform into the editing of the scene. I know that was really twisted, but Marie is cutting a collage in their bedroom. And as she's cutting, the scene starts being cut up and one of the Maries gets her head cut off by these scissors and her head is just a floating object and the whole room looks as if it is collaged. The scene is also right after they are upset that this gardener does not notice them and they start to get really insecure and feel that they aren't noticeable and that they don't exist. So the scene sort of becomes a really important moment of the film that questions identity and questions real life where Chitilova is focusing on existentialism, especially as both of these girls are kind of sulking in this pity and this insecurity that they're not being seen while their body parts are being cut up into a collage and that becomes the form of their dialogue and the physical perspective that the spectator is seeing. The art becomes a part of what the spectator is presented with most formally. And then there's the scene where they're stomping down the street. One is wearing green and one is wearing blue and they're just kind of going in this marching kind of parade manner and they're simply just singing, screaming, 
we exist, we exist. Again, it's bringing back this, this attention to the female, this attention to womanhood and to this attention of, of being alive. It, it's definitely a turning point too to see both of their relationship with each other, how they're questioning together if they matter. The film's ending is extremely interesting because there is a lot of gossip about whether the, the scene was put in to keep the production companies happy to bring in this sort of moral right into the film as the two main characters are both very naughty is, <laughs> is the best word for it and they don't behave. So you'll, you'll find that out when you watch the film. The ending scene tends to go on a bit and you, and you sort of question why it just didn't end when you may have thought it would end. There's, there's, a, there's a conversation to be had about whether or not this was done by Chitilova in respect to what she was facing with the production company standards, what was and wasn't controversial at that time. And pretty much up until the ending sequence of the film, it's nothing but controversy. So with that being said, I will let you be the judge of of this ending scene and I'm not going to spoil it for you. I really hope that you go and watch Daisies. It's available on canopy.com. I will link that below. This Sunday at 6 p.m. I'll be going live at Tim Pan Theater to discuss these, these questions, to discuss the ending, and talk a little bit more about how politics were affecting this film at the time. Thank you so much for tuning in this month. I had a really great time teaching these topics to you. I hope you learned some new things about film history that you may have not known before. So thanks again and keep watching movies.